Like all cheeses, mozzarella starts from milk. To assure good milk quality, the interior and exterior of tank trucks transporting milk must be washed after being emptied. A tank such as this one can carry an average of 30,000 liters of raw milk at a temperature of three or four degrees centigrade. Raw milk destined for cheese making contains 3.8% fats and 3.3% proteins. They store the milk and whey, a milk byproduct, in these immense silos, each with a capacity of 225,000 liters. This milk separator extracts surplus cream to adjust the percentage of fat according to the type of cheese to be made. Fabrication begins with this tank, which feeds the pasteurizer. Pasteurization sterilizes beverages, which can easily ferment. Milk samples are drawn off to precisely determine their milk fat and protein content. Tests are carried out in this laboratory where they impose controls. These test tubes contain milk samples, which will undergo microbiological analysis. Milk quality must be impeccable. This is a curdler with a 25,000 liter capacity into which milk and other essential ingredients for making mozzarella are introduced, such as the enzyme rennet that curdles the milk. This mix must be well stirred and cooked. The agitators are used to cut the whey into little lumps. This step takes about 30 minutes. The temperature of the tanks depends on the type of cheese they're making. Agitators continue stirring the milk. Once cooking is done, the Huey is pumped onto tables to be drained. It stays there for about 25 minutes. The solid and the liquid are now well separated. The liquid we see draining is called lactoserum. The lactoserum will be concentrated and transformed into milk byproducts. The water has been almost entirely extracted and the cheese particles are now sufficiently dry. This large automated blade then moves cheese particles towards the next step. That is toward the molder. In the molder, the cheese is cut up before being carried to the cooker, the final processing step. It appears that this mozzarella has just the right texture. The cheese finally arrives at the molder, which will give it the proper shape. Each mold has a 2.5 kilo capacity and is rectangular. Brine, a salt solution, serves to cool as well as to salt the cheese blocks. The blocks are unmolded and fall into a brine tank. Following on, the cheese blocks will remain in another brine solution for a while. They are then carried by a conveyor towards another tank where they will be immersed for four to 10 hours at a temperature of two degrees centigrade. Sprays of brine remove the foam which forms at the surface of the tank. The 30,000 liters of milk that we saw coming in by truck at the beginning have enabled them to produce some 1,400 blocks of cheese in only 8 to 12 hours. The cheese blocks are finally vacuum packed, ready for shipment.